Hello, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native, and this is the Effortless English Show, the show that teaches you to speak English powerfully. Welcome. Welcome, in fact, to the first show about my book. So I have good news. My book is now a bestseller on Amazon.com. Yay! Thank you to everyone who has already bought the book. Especially thank you to the people who gave great reviews of the book on Amazon. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. The reason I wrote this book was because of pain. You know, my career, my English teaching career started many, many years ago. And it started very painfully, in fact. The first several years of teaching English for me were very painful. Painful because basically, I failed. I was a failed English teacher in those early days. Now, I can remember my very first job in Korea teaching small children. <clears throat> now, I had no teaching experience at all, no knowledge, no training, nothing. And my first day, my bosses just opened the door and almost pushed me in. They said, here's your class. And they led me in. And there were you know, eight, eight or nine little Korean children looking up at me, waiting for me to teach. The boss closed the door, and I was stuck with those children for four hours. In fact, four hours every single day. And I had no idea what to do. And the children spoke zero English, nothing, nothing at all. It was a very stressful beginning to my teaching career. And I was frustrated because I didn't know what to do. So I just started experimenting, trying things. I started asking other teachers for advice, for help, for suggestions, anything that would work. I found any and all books and articles I could find about teaching English. I read through the whole library of the school, all the textbooks, everything, to try to figure out methods for teaching English better, effectively. Now, luckily, with very small children, you don't have to be a very good teacher. The truth is, very small children can learn English quite easily. They're so open that if you just talk to them in English, you just play with them, if you just communicate with them several hours a day, as I did, they will learn. So even though I was not a good teacher at that time, they were the perfect ideal students, and they learned to speak English very quickly. After just three months, my entire class spoke only English in class, 100% English. So after three months, we had a rule, no Korean in class, only English. And those little guys, those little kids, followed the rule. It was amazing. I thought, wow, I'm an amazing teacher. But really, I look back, I realize, no, it was them. And I think that was a very important step in my career because it did show me the power of children. That children have such an openness to learning that it makes them ideal language learners, ideal English learners. That's a lesson that would become very useful to me later as I developed the effortless English system. Now, a little bit later, I moved back. I moved back to America. Eventually, I taught English to adults. And I had a student named tell this story about Gladys a lot because it was also a powerful and painful part of my career. Gladys was a perfect student. She sat in the front row every class. She looked at me. She took notes. She did everything I said to do. But unfortunately, at that time, I was just a typical normal teacher. I used a textbook to teach. So I would 
teach from the textbook. You know, today, the past tense. And I would teach all the rules for the past tense. And then we would, uh, you know, do these uh, drills and exercises from the book. And the students would all take notes. I was supposed to do I was following the textbook, just like all the other teachers. The sad part was that Gladys never learned to speak well. Even after three, four months in my class, she came to me and uh, would make all the same mistakes. She could still barely speak English. You know, hello, teacher. Uh, how are you? Uh, yesterday I go to class. Uh, oh, uh, uh, you know, this kind of speaking. I kept doing the same thing, hoping she would get better. Another four months passed, same level of speaking. She never really improved. And that, that made me feel terrible. That made me feel like a total failure. It was very painful for me because I cared about my students. So it was painful for me to see them failing, to see them so frustrated. And that really started my journey, my search for better methods so that I could find a better way to teach English, get better results for my students. It took many years. Eventually, I went back to school. I got a master's degree. That wasn't enough, though, because I had to still keep looking and trying. I, I learned from other language teachers, other English teachers. I read books. I read research. And most of all, in my classes, I tried new things constantly. And if something worked, then I kept it. And if it didn't work, I got rid of it. And then I tried something else new. And over a process of years, over several years' time, I eventually created the Effortless English System. And of course, as you know, we <clears throat> launched the Effortless English website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. I created online English lessons and courses. You know that history, I, I think. So why the book? Why the book this year? Well, the reason is that the Effortless English System has continued to grow. So even after I launched the, in, the first website and the courses, I continued, and I still continue, to try new things. So the system is always growing. It's always changing. I'm always prove it. And in the last couple of years, I've added a lot of psychology, a lot of NLP, it's a psychology system, to Effortless English. I've learned a lot of things about helping students feel stronger, feel more confident, get faster and better results. And I've done a lot of blog posts and videos and YouTube videos, all kinds of things. But I felt like I needed to bring it all together and to describe the entire Effortless English system so that you, so that anyone could use it. And I wanted to do it in a way that was very cheap. So my courses, of course, are not cheap. I think they're the best there are. But I wanted a way that just anybody in the world for just a small amount of money, could get a book and learn the entire Effortless English system. And then they could use it in their own independent study at home anytime they wanted. That's why I wrote the book. It really started because of that pain, seeing students suffering, feeling, seeing students so stressed out about English, getting bad results, feeling terrible. And I wanted to help you to help all students in the world solve that problem because it caused me pain too. <laughs> Let's take a few questions from Twitter and then I'll talk a little more about the book. <clears throat> okay, our first Twitter question from Matu asks, uh, can I use the effortless English system for other languages, so not just English? The answer is absolutely yes, you can. So all of the methods and techniques that I describe in the book, 
Of course, I'm telling you how to use them to learn English, but you could use those same methods, those same techniques, the same secrets. You can use them to learn any language at all. So if you want to learn French, use everything I describe in the book and just use it for your French studies or for your Chinese studies or your Japanese studies, whatever. Absolutely, the system works for any language. In fact, my good friend Oscar in Barcelona has created a set of lessons to teach Spanish using the effortless English system. I'm using his lessons now to improve my Spanish. All right, next question. Roryif asks, which is better for listening to English? Listening to music or listening to movies? That's a good question. In fact, in the book, I, I discuss this issue a little bit, and I teach a method for using movies. So my answer to that question is movies are much, much, much better in my opinion. Why? Because of the kind of English that's used in music and in movies. See, the English used in music, most music, is basically poetry. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not conversational. The way that people sing or speak in a song, it's not normal English, right? It's, it's art, it's poetry, it's not direct. Often it's not clear. In fact, many times, even an English language song, I don't know what it means. Sometimes a student will say, what do these words mean from the song? Of course, I know each word, but I don't really understand what the meaning of the song is. It's because it's poetry and it can have many different meanings. That's great for art, it's great for listening, but not so great for learning to speak English well. On the other hand, a movie, especially a modern movie, so not, not a movie about 300 years ago, but a, a movie about recent times, especially dramas or romantic comedies, they usually use normal conversational English. There are a lot of conversations in a movie between the characters. Gosh. One second, I think we're having a technical problem. Let's see if we can fix that. Ah, I think we're back. Sorry, I think we had a short technical problem. So, a movie has a lot of normal conversations between the characters. So you're learning more natural, real English from a movie than you will from music. So, I believe movie is much better. Next question from Al Sal Sultan. How many books do you have? I have just this, just this one book right now. This is my first book. It's called Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native by A.J. Hogue. That's me, okay? So just one book right now. The book is available also in Vietnamese and soon will be available in Spanish. We'll do more translations in the future. All right. So what is the purpose of this book? And what is the purpose of Effortless English? And indeed, why are you learning English? What do you want to be able to do? I think the first goal is really an emotional goal, a feeling goal. I think the first goal is for you to speak English and feel confident and strong when you do it. Not feel nervous, not feel afraid every time you want to speak English. Oh, not worrying about making a mistake, not feeling stupid or embarrassed, feeling strong and also relaxed when you speak English. Feeling just as you do when you speak your own language. That's the first goal 
of effortless English. And I think it should be your first goal as well with English. Next, you want to speak using correct grammar, but you want to use grammar naturally, right? When you speak, you do not want to be thinking about grammar rules as you speak. It will cause your speech to be slow and unnatural, like Gladys, my old student, right? <clears throat> If you're thinking about grammar rules, then uh, 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 you start speaking like this with hesitation, very unnatural and slow. We don't want that. You want to speak with correct grammar, yes, but the same way that I speak or any American or British person or Australian, any native speaker, naturally. A little water for a second. <clears throat> Other goals, of course, eventually, you want to speak fluently. Fluently means without stopping, without translating in your head. It means you're thinking in English. The words are coming out easily and automatically, effortlessly. That's why it's called effortless English. Fluent speaking. Basically, when you're fluent, you speak English the way you speak your own language. It feels easy. It feels totally natural. It comes out very quickly. You're not thinking in your own language first. You're not translating. And then the final goal, the big goal, I guess, the top of the mountain, would be to speak English like a native speaker. To actually sound like an American, a Canadian, an Australian, a British person, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me? Now that's a very tough goal because to speak like a native, you must have fluency, you must have correct grammar, and you also must have fantastic pronunciation. The main point to think about now is that this is a step-by-step -step process. So don't focus on speaking like a native first until you feel confident and strong when you speak English, right? Do these one by one. First, learn to speak confidently and feel relaxed and confident every time you speak English. That's the first goal. Focus on that first. Until you can do that, don't worry about the other ones. When you can speak confidently, then you can work on speaking fluently. So you'll speak faster, and faster, more and more naturally, better and better grammar, etc. When you can speak fluently, then and only then, you can think about speaking like a native. And that really means focusing on pronunciation. But again, that's their final goal. So too many people get stressed out because they, they focus on speaking exactly like a native, but they don't even feel confident yet. So they're creating a goal that's much too big right now, and then it, that just makes them feel more and more stressed, which actually hurts their learning and makes them go slower. You're not gonna do that. So how do we do this? How do you achieve these goals of speaking more confidently, speaking more fluently, and eventually speaking like a native? We don't have enough time today for me to tell you the whole system. That's why I wrote a book, because it gives you the whole system. But today I will teach you one little tip, one little trick from the book that will help you start reaching that first goal, feeling more confident and strong every time you speak. This is a psychological method called anchoring. And basically what you want to do is you want to connect strong, confident feelings, powerful feelings, happy feelings, relaxed feelings to using English. You connect these two together so that they're always together automatically in your mind. Unfortunately, in school, the opposite happens. I'm sure you know. 
<laughs> Most schools do the opposite. They connect feelings of fear, nervousness, and embarrassment to English. So that after a few years in school in English classes, many, many, many students learn to constantly feel nervous, worried, or embarrassed whenever they try to speak English. I see this in Japan all the time. I'm in Japan right now. And there are actually a lot of people in Japan learn English. The whole population learns it in school for several years. Yet, almost no one will actually try to speak it. And the reason is because they're so nervous about it. They're so afraid of making a mistake because the way they learned in school created so much fear, so much stress connected to English. So that now, anytime a Japanese person, most Japanese people, think about using English, they immediately start feeling stressed and nervous. It's an automatic connection and it's quite deep. I don't know, maybe you have that same connection, maybe you did in the past. We gotta break that, it's the first step. Break that negative emotion, break that connection, and create a new one so that the opposite happens. Every time you start to speak English, you suddenly feel stronger, more confident, more happy, more excited. You can actually create this. You can train your brain to do this. How do you do it? Very, very simple. Step one, you have to make yourself super happy. Now, to train yourself, it means you gotta do it very, very, very powerfully. You can't just do it a little bit. So, I recommend playing your favorite music really loud. Energetic music, happy music, excited music. And then when you do, you start, put your hands in the air, jump. You can even shout if you're alone, yeah, yeah. Use your face, have a big smile on your face. Your shoulders go back. You know, I, I teach this in my Power English course. I teach this in my seminars. It's the very first step. You use your body so you feel fantastic. Jumping around, using motion, smiling, using your face, using your posture, using your shoulders back, chest up. And just by doing these physical movements, you will feel great, especially when you're playing your favorite music. Energetic music, though, not quiet music, energetic, fun music. Then, when you're feeling fantastic, turn off the music, keep smiling, and immediately start listening to English or start studying. You could be reading, you might be listening, maybe you're using effortless English lessons, whatever you're doing. Make sure every time you start learning English or practicing English that you first make yourself feel excited and happy and alive. Now, the first time you do this, nothing much will happen. It should feel pretty good. But what will happen is after 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, you'll feel your energy dropping. You start getting more tired. What should you do? Immediately turn off the English, turn off the audio, or put the book down, and then repeat. Play your favorite music, jump around, smiling, shoulders back, until you feel fantastic. Then turn off the music and go back to studying English again. You might do this every 10 minutes, or every 15 or 20 minutes. But you will do this every time you learn English. Every time you listen to English, practice English, read English. And you'll do it every single day. By doing it every time you use English, and you, by doing it every day, you will create a stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger connection between great feelings and the English language. Eventually, this connection will be so strong, it will become automatic. When that happens, when you start to speak English, you'll suddenly just feel great. You won't even know why. You'll think about using English, you'll hear English, you'll start using it, and then suddenly you'll feel better. You'll feel stronger, more confident, more happy. 
that's when you know this method, this technique is working. It's very, very powerful. Simple, fun, and powerful. Use it. Use it every day. Use it every single time you listen to English, read English, use English, or study English. All right, let's go to some more questions. We got a lot of people on the webinar today. <clears throat> Lots of questions coming in on the chat and on Twitter both. All right, our next question from uh, Yusuf. Where can I buy your book? Okay, well, that's a nice question. Uh, Amazon.com is the best place to buy my book. My book is on all the different Amazon sites. There's a Amazon USA, Canada, uh, Spain, Germany, I don't remember, Japan, Australia, there's a lot of them. And even if you don't live in one of those countries, usually you can buy the book on one of those Amazon sites anyway. And the book, there, if there's an ebook, right? You can just download the book. You can get the free Amazon Kindle app. It's their ebook app. You can get it on your phone, you can get it on your computer, it's free. So just download the ebook. So then it doesn't matter where you live. You don't have to worry about any shipping or anything like that. So Amazon is the easiest place to get my book. Now you could go to your local bookstore and tell them the name of the book, name of the book, tell them my name, and uh, they could try ordering it from a distributor. So you could also try that if you want. And, or you could just get the physical book on Amazon too. They will ship it. They will ship internationally as well. So you can, if you prefer a physical book you can hold instead of an ebook, you can uh, order that on Amazon too. Okay, our next question. From Max, uh, our good friend Max in Italy. Uh, he's got friends. Max is one of our superstar members. He's used the Effortless English system. He's had great success with it. And now he has some friends. They've seen his success. And they're asking him this question. And the question is, how can Effortless English change my approach to the learning process? Uh, that, that's a big question. Again, you know, it took me a whole book <laughs> to answer that question. So I'll try to give you a short answer. Uh, how can Effortless English change the learning process? Well, I think, let me compare it to the normal learning process from schools. The normal learning process is uh, you get a textbook and then you go through chapter by chapter you're focused mostly on grammar and you're memorizing grammar rules you're also memorizing some vocabulary <clears throat> with effortless english the learning process let me tell you a typical day for a effortless english learner is uh they get up they get their phone or their ipad or ipod or whatever they, they put on their headphones and they start listening to English. It might be my lessons, it might be other things, but the point is, instead of focusing on a textbook, they're using their ears to learn, not their eyes. That's one big, big, big secret of Effortless English is it's listening focused. You're learning with your ears. Listening is the key to speaking better. And then throughout the day, you're just listening to different audios, if you're using the Effortless English lessons, one of the courses, then you're using a variety of lessons. So you're sometimes you're just listening quietly, sometimes you're actually listening and I'm asking a question on the audio, and then you're answering it out loud, you're saying yes, no, answering my audio questions. Um, and sometimes you might even be listening carefully and then trying to copy my pronunciation. And you'll do this for an hour or two every single day. If you want to do a little extra, you want to improve your vocabulary a little more, you might also read a book in English. I recommend books, full books. And you could listen to some audiobooks too, as some extra English learning as well. And that's a normal, typical day for an effortless English student. Not so much studying as listening and practicing. It's more like training, more like an athlete trains instead of a student studying from a book. Okay, um, see we got any other questions? 
Uh, okay, is it natural to hear the lesson several times and not understand anything? Fabio is asking. Yes, it is to totally normal. If you're using one of my lessons uh, from one of my courses or my VIP program, it's very normal the first time you hear it to not really understand much, right? It's all new, and so that's a normal thing. That's why we include the text, so you can actually read along if you need to. So what I usually recommend for the lessons is that the first few times you listen to a new lesson, especially if your level's a little lower, that you listen and you read along at the same time. It will help you understand everything. In fact, if you need to, you could just read first, and you could even use a dictionary to find the meaning of some new words if necessary, and make sure you understand everything. And then eventually you can put the text away and then just focus on listening only. So it's a common thing. Nothing to worry about. What you'll find is that as you listen several times to those audios, which is another part of the effortless English system, repeated listening, each time it'll start getting easier. And, and over several days, by the third, fourth, fifth, sixth day, you'll start understanding more and more and more. By the end of a week or two, you understand everything 100%, no problem. All right, well, we're coming to the end of this show, this uh, special show for the book. First of all, before we go, I want to say thank you to all the people, again, who have left the five-star reviews on Amazon.com. I really appreciate that. I, I know that you took some extra time to do that. I appreciate you telling other people about Effortless English. So thank you so much. It's really wonderful. So we'll end with that, that final question. How can I get the book? Where can I get it? So Amazon, again, Amazon.com is the best place to get it. You just go to any of the Amazon sites, choose one in your language or choose one that's close to you or just use the, the regular uh, USA one, amazon.com and then just do a search in, in Amazon for Effortless English by AJ Hogue. That's me. Okay. Others that, by the way, have asked about the audio book. I did create an audio book where I personally, it's my voice, I read this entire book so that you can read and listen at the same time. I know a lot of people have said that they want to use the audiobook with the book. So the audiobook is almost ready. I think just a week or two. It's coming very, 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 very soon. I will send an email very soon with information about the audiobook and how to get it and where to get it. The book is available now. You can get that now as an ebook or a paperback. The audiobook coming very, very soon. Finally, let me just say that I'm very, very grateful to our wonderful Effortless English community. I was recently traveling for a couple of months. I was not online much. I didn't really get onto Twitter even. I, I really wasn't doing anything as I was, I was out in the mountains part of the time, hiking in the, the Himalayan mountains. I was in the jungle. I was away from the internet, not working at all. And what happened during that time is that many of our wonderful VIP members helped out while I was gone. In other words, on Twitter, I saw people would ask questions, new members or people who are just curious. They would ask a question on Twitter, something about effortless English. Because I wasn't there, one of our VIP members, people like Kaula or... Um, Julia or Max, or many others, they would get on there and they would answer the questions. They would help out the new members. They would help out the people who were not even members yet. And I think that really shows what a wonderful, caring international community we have. It's not, you know, none of those people are getting paid. It's not their job, just being helpful and friendly. And I, I appreciate that so much. So thank you to all our super helpful members around the world who take their time to help other people. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. Looking forward to doing more Effortless English shows. Looking forward to meeting more of you when I travel around the world. And until then, bye for now. I love you all. Mwah. See you again soon.
Have a great day. Bye-bye.